Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Ha Raka Kwadash Ma'amah. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and the elders. Double honors to my elder as well, Harwan Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Dan Camp. And salutations to the fellow Akim, our wife and children that believe in truth and in sincerity. It's your brother. I thank y'all are back to another lesson. And y'all are to Zah is edifying. And basically, this is just some local local news. All right, a little news update. All right, I'm going to be quick on it. And uh, pretty much uh, going into how uh, it just is titled, How Sanctions Against Russia Will Affect Gas Prices. All right. And ultimately, it's going to affect the gas prices, the su supply chain. All right. And as a, like our elders said here, this camp, you know, of... Uh, how a, they're going to use Russia as a scapegoat for the economy collapse, all right, and the crash of the dollar, all right, and they're talking about like, how gas prices, for one, how you move around to get the dollar, how you run and get a run, run the rat race, all right, with your vehicle, all right, of uh, how, how gas is, is prices are going to go high, all right, and more importantly, uh, also how um, Russia... Um, is involved as far as um, how much they get per bar barrel, which is a pretty much a good amount. Um, so, a, a famine, you know, ultimately a famine coming to America, you know, um, America being um, brought low to that third world country, all right? President Joe Biden announcing that the U.S. and its allies have agreed to release 60 million barrels of oil from their reserves. And we've heard that you want to know exactly how much gas, Heather, would this mean and how will this and economic sanctions affect the prices you pay? Kaylee Tracy is on your side tonight getting your questions answered. Right, and that, that, that barrels of uh, the allies are going to release, it may sound like a lot, but I think uh, later on in this uh, video they're going to say that it's... Um, It'll last Americans three days. We're facing real supply disruption from uh, from Russia as a result of the sanctions that we've placed on their businesses. Buckle up, warns petroleum price now. And not only your focus should be on Russia, but how uh, Russia is a guard to these other nations, man, according to Ezekiel chapter 38, right? And um, China being... Uh, a big player in the game as well is siding with Russia, all right, ultimately. And this is the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 38, <clears throat> and I'll start at verse 1. And it reads, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, th the land of Magog, right, the Russia, all right, God, the Kremlin, the land of Magog, Russia, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. <clears throat> and say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I am against thee. Right, so the Lord is against Russia. All right, but he's going to use Russia, all right, a ultimately to turn back the captivity of Israel, all right, and um, bring in the third nucleus war to uh, bring in his righteous indignation upon the earth, the wicked, and uh, all Idumia, Esau, Edom, all right, the so-called Caucasian race in America, all right, and wipe it off the face of the earth, all right, and this is Ezekiel 38 and 3, and say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, right? You know, and just like a, a, a year or two ago, you had uh, Russia talking about how they were trying to escalate, de-escalate war, all right? But now, hey, every, hey, everything is all stirred up, man, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, as he mustered up the host of the battle, all right? As well as he ruleth in the kingdom of men. But it's back in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 4. And I start from the top, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, 
even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomar and all his bands, the house of Togomar and the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee, right? So he's going to be a guard to many people, many nations. And this verse 7, be thou prepared, right? And, 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 and the bear meaning enough, all right? So they're prepared, man. Through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, they're prepared. And this is verse 7, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them, right? And that's the point of how they're going to be a guard to these nations, man. And how Russia, uh, uh, China, I mentioned, is a big player in the game as you have a lot of things over here in America is made in China, all right? And that's a loophole on a lot of goods as well, all right? So you have, you know, uh, Russia dealing with the oil and gas prices as well as they, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, um, their affiliate, all right, being the, uh, China, all right, um, a being with the rest of the, all the other goods, all right, being backed up. And, and ultimately is going to lead to the famine that the Lord is going to bring a, to America, to this second Egypt, man. All right. These, the plagues that the, the Lord brought on that first, the first Egypt, is ultimately is coming upon the second Egypt, man, the second house of bondage, man. Assist Patrick DeHaan and get ready to pay even more at the pump. It would not surprise me if potentially later today or tomorrow, Average prices across much of Florida could hit 369, maybe even 379 a gallon. Han says we could reach record highs close to $4.50 before prices recede, maybe by the summer. But that depends on what Russia does. But the road we're on looks like it's going to continue going higher for quite some time before there's any relief coming. And what about the 60 million barrels of oil the U.S. and its allies are releasing? Han says that would only last the U.S. three days. The problem is the U.S. can't just isolate itself uh, from the rest of the world. Increasing oil production in the U.S. as a solution, he says, is easier said than done. Oil prices are a global market. If the U.S. were to basically keep all the oil we produce, that would cause oil companies to greatly scale back their investment in drilling in new wells. And that would eventually cost us in the long run. Jacksonville financial expert Abdel Misa says it's not just gas prices where you'll feel the pinch. It's food as well. Part of it is demand based and part of it is supply based. Right? So it's a perfect storm for inflation. But and there you go. You know, the double whammy. All right. Not just gas, but food as well, man. Just a famine. All right. All right. Just, hey, the Lord's going to plague this place. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15. And verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So that's what the Lord is bringing upon this place, man. You know, all the world, but ultimately here in the land of our captivity, man, the land of the north, all right, where, in, where we're in the neck of of our enemies, man, you know, mainly here in America, all right, where you have a majority of the Lord's people here bottled up in this uh, melting pot, all right, of this label, was labeled this so-called great city, all right, but now it's not great anymore, all right, the hammer is broken, and this is verse 6, and back in Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 6, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled, right? Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually, right? You know, you have the apostles and elders out there on down, prophesying week in and week out, all right, in truth and in sincerity, all right, a sounding the alarm, all right, um, having those uh, those prayers and those those cries being bottled up and heard, all right, and stored in the Shemayims, man, in the heavens, all right, all getting bottled up, man, for the Lord to send his judgment, you know, so the Lord is not going to uh, uh, hold back 
his judgments anymore pertaining to the wickedness throughout the four corners of the earth, <clears throat> which the people commit, all right? Because you have a the just crying on to the Lord, and this is verse 9, and therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them, right? You know, so that's ultimately what it's about, man. The Lord gathering his remnant, all right, his elect from amongst the nations, all right? You know, his elect out of his his, his peculiar people, his, his, his chosen nation being Israel, all right? But the elect from them, all right? Because even two-thirds of our people have to perish on this side because they love this place, all right? You know, they don't, they don't want to uh, deliver themselves out of this place, all right? And free their minds spiritually and come out of the uh, doctrines and philosophies and ways of, 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 of this place, of this world. All right. Their God is the God of this world. All right. But this is verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Con. Right. And this is this is that this is that Egypt is talking about, man, America, the second Egypt. All right. And this is verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Right. You know. So hey, that, that's pertaining to what? Revelations chapter 11, verse 8. You know, this is spiritually Sodom and Egypt, man. So this is the Egypt. All right. The second Egypt, you know. You know, as, as the Lord sent the plagues before on the on the on the first house of bondage all right and on the and in their pharaoh all right and slay the firstborns of, of of their people right being that we coming up on the passover right the lord is a getting ready to to, to, to put a great slaughter on on basra man on esau edom and america all right aka uh spiritually sodom and egypt pertaining to revelations 11 verse 8 all right You know, ultimately to show his might, to show his will, to show his power, man, to show he still exists, all right, and that he is, man, all right, and there's nothing above him, that he's the Alpha and Omega, man, and he resides in, in the nation of Israel, you know, with the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, and their forefathers, all right, being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, so, hey, as, be, as before in verse uh, 11 said, all right, so hey, all those plagues on Egypt are coming hey, to this this Egypt, man, to this place. All right, from now I want to get the book of Exodus, chapter 7, and verse 3. And it reads, And I will hearten Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. All right. You know, and that's what he was telling, t telling uh, Moses and his brother Aaron. All right. Most how was telling Moses and his brother Aaron. All right. How what he was going to do on the uh, first Egypt. All right. How he's going to hearten the Pharaoh's heart. Ultimately to show his his will to show that he is man, that he's the power. And this is verse four and ultimately to turn back the captivity of, of Israel. All right. But as the first Egypt and he delivered the, uh, all Israel out of the first Egypt, all Israel is not being delivered out of the second Egypt, all right? Because the the Israelites that love uh, the first Egypt and wanted to go back into the first Egypt, all right, are still here, here, here today, all right? Loving Egypt, all right, in that in that stuck in that lot, all right? Um, living it up, man. Living the uh, American dream, so to speak. Loving the rat race, all right? Loving Esau and his ways, all right? And Massa, all right? You know, worshiping idols and tents. And this is Exodus 7 and 4. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. And I may lay my hand upon, up upon Egypt, Salakia, and bring forth my armies, right? You know, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments, right? You know, so the Lord is going to show great judgments, man. Plagues, famine, you know, all, all that is sent for what scourges of amendment. I believe that's in Second Ezra chapter 16. 
All right. And it's verse five. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. You know, and that's the point. You know, and that's what the Lord go do in the second Egypt, man. You know, by way of his son, Yahweh Shah. All right. You know, and those holy angels, man, being the Lord of Sabaoth, Oath, right? The Lord of Armies. And this is the uh, book of James. Bear with me. Before I get that, I'm going to get the book of uh, Joel, chapter 2 and verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very, very great. For he is strong that exceedeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Right, Adashadia. All right. And who can abide it, right? You know, so the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, man. You know, this is the book of James. It's a lucky. Chapter 5 and verse 4. And it's the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 4. And it reads, Behold, the hire of the laborers, which have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Come. And we go to that, that, that word Sabaoth in the uh, etymology in the blue letter. It goes into the... Uh, term armies all right troops all right so he the lord of armies man troops all right you know and he's gonna utter his voice to that army man ultimately you know on that day all right when he sent his son and his son descend with that great shout you know he turned back the captivity of of, of you so-called negroes latinos and native americans all right the nation of israel But from there, I want to get the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 19. And this is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Right. You know, amendment. You think of amendment as correction. All right. And all that, all the famine, plague, tribulation and anguish, anguish. All that is being a hey, lamentations, mourners, and woes written in the scriptures, man. The the, the, the judgments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, right? All that is being sent upon the earth for correction, man, to put it in its proper order, all right, and put the uh, proper people in their proper position, man, being the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, the nation of Israel, all right, the apple of his eye, all right, the peculiar people, all right, as we have drunk of the cup, and now it's time. For Esau, all right, to drink of the cup, all right, and these other nations to drink of that cup, all right, of, of, of slavery, servitude. This is verse 20. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges, right? Even two thirds of our people, all right, they're, they're, they're not going to turn and, 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 and turn back. All right, they're going to be uh, continuing to marriage. I believe that's what, Luke 17. All right, so like if I'm wrong, all right. But it goes into how they're going to be uh, in the times of, of Noah, all right. 
You know, they're going to be sound asleep, man, because ultimately that's the state the Lord putting them in. All right. Because, again, they're the two thirds that were in Israel. All right. That uh, wanted to go back into the first Egypt, man. you know, that the Lord was displeased with. So they're stuck in that lot. All right. Per, that perim. This verse 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. Right. You know, they, they go think themselves to be in good case because they can uh, go spend some money. They get in they, uh, they, they, they tax returns back. Right. They can go and uh, spin it up and, and live it up. But they don't know that it's, it's getting uh, is it's, it's emptying their bank accounts and, and leaving their pockets quicker. Than, than, than the years before, all right? Because the inflation is hitting, all right? And hyperinflation is coming into play, all right? You know, as you see, the gas prices is going up and not only the gas prices, but the food, all right? And it's all from the ripple effects of poking the bear, all right? And this is back in 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Right. You know, so it's just going to increase. You know, it's Jacob's trouble, man. It's going to increase. A hey, prophecy is going to continue to unfold all the way up to Revelations 13. All right, and 15 being MOTB. And that's when re people really go go bugged out. All right, because it's gonna be made evident. All right, what's what's been 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 taught, what's been spoken. All right, been warned, given off the warning to the people. All right, that that that's the uh, mark of the beast. All right, a a a people go be met with that uh, life and death decision, man. And people go get weak. All right, and ultimately those who not dwelling in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. All right, so you're going to have to have the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Hashim Yahweh Shah ultimately to, to even stay in trial and even go through the test, man, you know. Verse 22, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine and, a, and, a, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, right? And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. There shall no, there shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. Con the tree shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? Right. So it's just go get, you know, real, real gloomy, right? Real. Uh, Dreadful out here, man. Like how dread, Jake grow dreads and don't touch his head and it get all messy and locked up. That's how the 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 the, the, the grass of and, and stuff will grow here in America. All right, you know, because the Lord is go. Hey, he's plaguing this place, man. You know, and also he's bringing that famine in. All right, and those who didn't listen and didn't want to hearken to his warning and is not going to hearken and don't want to repent and turn back to the Lord while they have time, right? They're going to uh, be met with judgment, all right? And this is Isaiah 65 and 12, and I'll start wrapping it up. And this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I call... Ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. You know? You know, so you go get the shit end of the stick, man. You know, but this is verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Right. You 
You know, so they go be in vexation of spirit, man. You know, they go get the shit in the stick and knew that they erred from the way of truth, man. And they wasn't in the way of uh, in the way of righteousness. All right, you know, but those who uh, dwell in the secret place of the Most High, all right, believing on His name, all right, calling upon His name, all right, and and, and, and ultimately, a, a believing and hoping in His mercy. Right, you know, a, we shall eat in that day. We shouldn't be hungry, all right. As he's talking about famine, all right. You know, no plague shall come thy thy dwelling, all right. This is Proverbs chapter one and twenty eight. You know, but as for those who don't want to listen and don't want to hearken and repent and turn back to the Lord, you know, turn back at His reproof, all right. They're gonna be a part of those judgments, those plagues, and a part of that famine. All right. And this is the book of Proverbs, chapter one and verse 28. And it reads, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Right. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way? And be filled with their own devices, right? So you go go and get Esau devices, man. You go be filled with your own way. You know, you go be have to be left with what you know, all right? The knowledge that you 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 claim you had or 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 know or knew. All right, you go have it's, it's, it's gonna have to be sufficient in that day. All right, the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right, that's why in that day you want to have his knowledge, his wisdom, his truth, his understanding. And this is verse 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So kind, you know, and, and Yahweh Ratazad is less what's edifying, all right? A, the famine coming upon this place, as you can see, a, the hyperinflation is, is coming into play, all right? The inflation to hyperinflation. All right, it's just, just talks, all right, even in local news is touching just the ripple effects of just a poking the bear being Russia, all right, who the Lord has prepared and made them enough, all right, and he's going to use Russia even though he's against them, all right, as he's doing right now, man. So that's what's going on as far as it's leading to the third nuclear war, all right, you know, the uh, the wick, you know, uh, uh, to the wildfire, Yahar Ratazah, and Shalawam Habatah. And DTA.